If you guys like this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Check out my channel. I post a new video every single day at nine. Hit me up on Instagram, Isaac Gomez with four Z's. Can a lightweight beat a middleweight? Can somebody beat somebody that's like 20 pounds heavier than them? All right, now, if we're talking stat for stat, in grappling or in fighting in general, all right, stand up fighting is a little different, usually the lighter man wins. But uh, if, you, if you're comparing two people that have the exact same characteristics, the same, the same tenacity, the same strength, the same power, the same speed, the same technique, like everything is exactly the same. And one weighs 20 pounds more of muscle. One has 20 pounds more muscle. The heavier man will win, all right? The heavier man always wins. If they are exactly the same, having more power, having more of you, is very useful and i'm saying the same as in proportionally the same like pound for pound the same but obviously one weighs 20 pounds more why am i talking about this okay if you guys have been sleeping under a rock and you guys didn't know the ufc last fight where nick diaz fought robbie lawler alexander volkanovsky beat the shit out of brian ortega okay now something very interesting happened okay me and like a bunch of other people on the internet like have come to this conclusion Brian Ortega was better on the feet technically speaking he was a much much better fighter as far as technique goes Jackie get out of the way as far as technique goes he was a much better fighter but he lost every single round okay now why was it Alexander Volkanovsky showed much more much more tenacity much more speed much more power all right when he connected it was it seemed equivalent to like five of Brian Ortega's punches if Brian Ortega's face literally swelled shut, swelled shut. Brian Ortega hit him with his best submission attempt, and he couldn't, he couldn't finish him. Okay, and he got, he got a mounted triangle, a mounted guillotine deep, and then he got a triangle, not as deep, but that's like his, he's literally T city, he's triangle city. So understand the kind of win this was for Alexander Volkanovsky. Now that was on, that was Saturday night, Sunday morning. Okay. Now today, Tuesday. I see on YouTube that, I don't know if it was an, uh, an Ariel Hawani interview or I don't know who it was, but Alexander Volkanovsky is scared to fight our boy Henry Cejudo. Now, I have been preaching on this channel for years now that Henry Cejudo is the most slept on fighter in the UFC, okay? He is the most, like, like the man literally has an Olympic medal and two belts. He plays into the worst possible character like imaginable whatever whatever he is so many levels ahead of all of the, his, the peers around him at this point in time i don't see anybody who compares to his level of like talent why do i say this why do i say this if you watch his marlon marais fight okay he was getting beat he was getting beat badly all right he was losing the fight and what did he do he changed the entire way that he fights you understand how difficult, it, like, do you, like, I don't think you guys can grasp how hard it is to have more than one style of fighting. To have, like, like, all right, the wrestlers watching this video, how many of you can shoot from your left and your right side? All right, it took me a long time to get confident in, like, doing both so that I could, like, time my takedowns better. It took me a long time of drilling both to get my opposite side decent. All right, to have two different styles, to be to go from karate to like just boxing and brawling, that is bananas, okay? If I were Alexander, I probably would be scared. All right, but like I wouldn't, I don't think I would be able to show it. I don't think I would be able to like go on TV and be like, yeah. I'm telling you, Alexander and his PR team or whoever probably think they are geniuses coming out with this. He hasn't earned the title shot yet. Like, dude, he's a retired double champ. He had both of the belts when he retired. If anyone deserves a title, it's him. If anybody deserves the shot, it is him. He has proved himself. Like, he has proved that he can do this twice, bro. Two times. We talked about Henry Cejudo's ability to change his style in his fight. If you guys watched the TJ Dillashaw fight, you will see when things are going Henry's way, he does not miss, and like, nothing misses. You know what I mean? There is not a second lost that isn't exactly perfectly like what he wants. You know what I mean? There isn't a step forward that doesn't count. Like every step forward has purpose. Every single, every time he closes the distance, every second, he times everything. 
His timing is like levels above, levels, levels, levels above everybody else in the UFC. All right, he leaves zero time to think, literally zero time. He times everything perfect. In the moments when other fighters are like, like they reset or they breathe, like, like it's literally half a second. It's such a small window of time. People don't even think to cap, like they don't even think you can capitalize on this time. And Henry Cejudo did it on TJ Dillashaw. Like that was a perfect example. All right, and this is how those lightweights are. This is like those lightweights are so high level. If you want to see really good fighting. Watch the 125 pounders, bro. They're so, so high level. It's nuts. Just like the decision making alone is like levels above everybody, every other weight. Because when one thing when one thing happens, the timer starting and finishing to counter is so much smaller. The window of opportunity for every single movement you make as a lighter weight is so much smaller. These guys are insane, and when they go up weights, like, bro, you're gonna watch. Henry Cejudo will dom- I'm, I prom- I believe Henry Cejudo can dominate all three weight classes. 25, 35, and 45. I believe at 55, he starts having an issue. You know, the guy's just gonna be too big. But yeah, at 45, he, he's probably not more powerful than Alexander Volkanovsky. He's probably not more powerful, you know what I mean? I, I don't think his- Alexander Volkanovsky's punches are gonna mean the same as Henry Cejudo's. But I think Henry Cejudo, all right, now the next time he fights, come back to this video. Henry Cejudo, he knows how to time every single punch. So like every second of every match, he is following his game plan and he is like, you know what I mean? He is making you defend and react. All right, he is making you react and he is imposing his will on you. All right, very hard to find, very hard very hard to execute, extremely difficult to execute. Watch his fights and take note. Take note of what he does. Watch D, uh, watch Demetrius Johnson, all right? Take note of what they do. They are, like their decision making is so high level. Joseph Benavides, Joseph Benavides, another one, he just retired. Their, their, their decision making is so high level at the lightweight that a guy that just beat the shit out of, I believe the number one contender, it's scared to fight a guy two weights below and has been retired for whatever, three years. He's literally 5'4", he's a little guy. He's a tiny little guy, all right? But you mean motherfucker, mean motherfucker, let me tell you. you can, if you like that video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, check out my channel, I post a new video every day at nine. Hit me up on Instagram, Isaac Gomez with four Z's. But until next time, I'll see you guys. Peace.